And there are other books that, that were written by human beings, such as the, um, the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Koran. Mm -hmm. But a human being, it, it eventually all goes back to a human being. Now, of course, people say he was guided by, the, they all claim they were guided by the Holy Spirit, but everybody is guided by the Holy Spirit, I presume. That's a good question. No, it's, it's a reasonable question because he's asking in the sense of, you know, I mean, how do we know that the Bible from other <coughs> books are pretty much the, the right book in a sense, and why should I get my theory from that when other people who have been, quote-unquote, allegedly inspired, is that right? Just written that other way. The, the Bible definitely stands out, and, and obviously, again, I'm not going to appeal to history. I'm going to appeal to psychology here. And one of the interesting things about scripture, let's just take it, for example, as you juxtapose it against the Book of Mormon and the Book of Islam. First of all, the problem with a lot of that is, is that, that you have certain claims where an absolute ruler, okay, who is a person, and we know who Muhammad is, and we know who Joseph Smith is, and we know a lot of their faux pas, wrote a book and they broke their own rules. What's interesting about Jesus, okay, and what's interesting about, and that doesn't mean that Christians aren't going to break the laws. I mean, the scripture definitely says man is sinful, and he is inherently sinful. So obviously, for man to become a Christian and completely keep the book is obviously something that the scripture does not even display in and of itself. I mean, you see God deal with David, for example. I mean, he was God's man, and he definitely dealt with David when David... But there's certain things, the interesting thing is, is there's a numerous amount of writers in the scripture versus one writer versus those other two, except for the fact I know Muhammad was illiterate and he had several manuenses, but we know that, if you, I, I take it, Oshin, that you're, you're a studier of history, you know what happened with Pope Uthman, or the, the Caliph Uthman, the third Caliph, that he burned any variant versions of the Quran. And, 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 of course, we know Joseph Smith. And the interesting thing is you have the example of Muhammad. He said uh, a Muslim could only have four wives, but he had 11. So we write that in there. Now, it's interesting, and I will go back to the book of Leviticus. In Leviticus chapters 19, 20, 21, somewhere around there, you will see, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord. First of all, grounding personal ethics in a person, which makes logical sense. Number one, but at the same time, you see the writers of like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, especially even Peter, and we see the broad amount of their failures written right out in the scriptures. And I would say, and there are certain things that men write down that go against their base nature, like for example, premarital sex, and certain things that no man in his just in his regular mindset would write down and just say, yeah, don't do this. Um, unless he was inspired by someone other than himself. So I would say, now is that absolute for proof for scripture? Of course not. I mean, there would be much more that would be, and if we did a thing on the reliability of scripture, but when it comes down to the Bible show is unique because every writer is just, in terms of the human writers, um, are, are, are held in just as much of, of um, what, what's the word I'm looking for, are bound to those laws just as much as they're the people that are going to eventually read those things. So, and, and I think that that really, with that amount of agreement over that span of time, different countries, different continents, and so on, makes the Bible stand out versus uh, a book like the, the Book of Mormon and, 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 and the Islamic Book of the Quran. Yeah, let me, uh, I think, just briefly, I'm going to tag off O'Shea's uh, comment. I'm going to ask myself in, a question and answer, if I, if I may. Um, it gets to the question, and, and I think what Jeremy is, is kind of basing this all on is uh, the question, is God moral? And I think Jeremy would argue that uh, God is moral by nature. The problem with that position is that in order for God to be moral, or to be the ultimate morality, or whatever term you want to use is, he has to be all-knowing. He has to be infinitely knowledgeable to know the consequences of all actions under all circumstances. The question is, as human beings with finite knowledge, and this gets back to the epistemology, how is it possible for human beings to know that God is infinitely knowledgeable? Wouldn't God only need to be more knowledgeable 
than man. It's as if a child were asking an adult, you know, why this and why that? And the adult answers all the questions and the child coming to the conclusion, well, this adult knows everything. Well, the adult doesn't know everything. But there's no way for the child to know the extent of the adult's knowledge. There's no way for man with limited knowledge to say that God is all-knowing. That is a completely unsupported presupposition. And that is absolutely required in order for there to be moral absolutes. And so we I'd like to uh, thank Dan and Jeremy for showing up today and presenting us with this. With this I think we could obviously go on for another six hours uh, pretty easily. Uh, but uh, we are constrained on the amount of time we have the, in the room. We have to be out by three sharp. So uh, I'd like to just say thank you and offer. <laughs> Thank you.